welcome in today's lecture we will solve some more problems on taylor's theorem maclaurin's theorem and then we will study concavity and convexity so on taylor's maclaurin's theorem we consider this problem in which verification of maclaurin's theorem is needed so the question is to verify maclaurin's theorem for fx equal to x cube minus 3x square plus 2x in the interval 0 half so we want to verify maclaurin's theorem for fx in this interval to verify maclaurin's theorem in this interval up to two terms we will first write the maclaurin's theorem up to two terms with remainder so according to maclaurin's theorem fx is equal to f0 plus x f0 plus and then we will write the remainder term because you want to write maclaurin's theorem up to two terms only so the next term we will write in the form of remainder so we will have f s theta x f double s theta x here so now you can further note down that in the book they may have mentioned to verify taylor's theorem for function in this interval so i have corrected that you can note down that the interval is of this form starting from zero so maclaurin's theorem will be applicable in this case now we have fx fx is x cube minus 3x square plus 2x now we differentiate and calculate the first derivative which will be equal to 3x square minus 6x plus 2 and the second derivative which will be equal to 6x minus 6 so we need derivative of two second order only then we will need the value of function at 0 so we put x equal to 0 then you observe that at 0 is 0 next we put x equal to 0 in f s x so we get f s 0 equal to 2 and in the second derivative we will substitute theta x because we will need a uh, second derivative at theta x so at double x theta x will be equal to we can take 6 common so we will have theta x minus 1 now we put the values in the above statement of the theorem so we get fx equal to 0 plus x into 2 plus x square upon 2 and f double x theta x is equal to 6 theta x minus 1 so we get fx equal to 2x plus x square upon 2 into 6 theta x minus 1 now to verify maclaurin's theorem we need to find the value of theta and if the value of theta comes between 0 and 1 then we will say that our maclaurin's theorem is verified for this function up to two terms so here we use the end point of the given interval so we put x equal to half so when we put x equal to half here we will have 1 and here we will have 6 upon 8 and in place of x we are substituting half so here we will have theta by 2 minus 1 now we need the value of f half 
so we calculate the value of the function at half so the value will be 1 by 8 minus 3 by 4 plus 1 because we are substituting x equal to half now if we calculate it so we will get 8 1 minus 6 plus 8 so we will have 9 minus 6 equal to 3 by 8 correct now we put this value here so here we have 3 by 8 equal to 1 plus 6 by 8 theta by 2 minus 1 so you can simplify it and find the value of theta so you will find that the value of theta comes equal to 1 by 3 which lies between 0 1 hence Maclaurin's theorem is very fine so this is an unsolved problem of our main test to be Ramana you can find that they have uh, done error here they have not written theta by 2 here by mistake they have mentioned theta in place of theta by 2 so in their calculation they got theta equal to 1 by 6 but the correct value of theta will be 1 by 3 now after this we consider a problem of Taylor's theorem so next question is on Taylor's theorem so for Taylor's theorem we have this question that given a function fx equal to x to the power 4 minus 5x cube plus 5x square plus x plus 2 expand expand fx in powers of in powers of x minus 2 so you can note down that no name of the theorem is mentioned but we can understand because we want to expand fx in powers of x minus 2 so that is why we need to apply Taylor's theorem and uh, no nothing about remainder terms is mentioned so what we will assume is that the infinite series ex expansion is possible for this function and we will try to calculate the formal series expansion formal Taylor series expansion for the given function so for that we need the values of the derivatives so we calculate all the derivatives successively so f dash x will be equal to 4x cube minus 15 x square plus 10x plus 1 so I have differentiated fx now I calculate second derivative second derivative will be equal to 12x square minus 30x plus 10 next I calculate third derivative it will be equal to 24x minus 30 fourth derivative will be equal to 24 and of course the other derivative the next derivatives all the next derivatives will be equal to 0 because fourth derivative constant so fifth derivative and all the remaining derivatives will be 0 so in this way we are able to calculate all the derivatives in this case because the given function is simply a polynomial and with degree 4 with highest power of x 4 so that is why we will have derivatives up to 4 order only and all the derivatives uh, of order 5th and after that will be 0 now we can see that we can apply the Taylor's theorem we know that the infinite series 
given by the formal infinite series given by the Taylor's theorem can be written in this form. If you want to have x, if you want to express f x in powers of x minus a, then we have this formal series expansion. x minus a square by factorial 2 f double s a and similar terms up to infinite order. So you can visualize the next term. The next term after this will be x minus a cube upon factorial 3 and triple s a and so on. Now here for our this Taylor's series formula expand fx in powers of x minus a. We want to expand fx in powers of x minus 2. So we will put a equal to 2. So we are taking a equal to 2. So all fx will be calculated by this formula fx equal to f2. So we are simply writing 2 in place of a. So we are getting fs2 plus x minus 2 square upon factorial 2 f double s2 plus because we have calculated up to fourth derivative so we can write terms up to fourth derivative x minus 2 cube upon factorial 3 f triple s3 and then x minus 2 to the power 4 upon factorial 4 and fourth derivative at 2 so we are calculating all the derivatives at 2 only because we want to expand it in powers of x minus 2. Now after fourth derivative, there is no need to write further terms in this case because we know that all the remaining derivatives will be 0. So this series will terminate here. Now I substitute the values of f2, fs2, fws2 and f s 2 and f42 here and we will get the formal Taylor's infinite series expansion for this function in powers of x minus 2. So before that we need to calculate these values f2. So if we will put x equal to 2 here then we need to calculate so 2 to the power 4 16 2 to the power 3 8 so here we will have minus 40 and here we will have plus 20 here we will have plus 2 plus 2 so plus 4 so you can calculate the value of f2 so the value of f2 will be 36 plus 4 will be 0 and similarly you can calculate the value of f2 the value of f2 will be 8 into 4 32 minus 15 into 4 60 plus 10 into 2 plus 20 plus 1 so you can calculate the value of this 2 from here and similarly you can calculate the value of uh, third derivative, fourth derivative and fifth derivative and you can substitute the values of f2, fs2, f double s2, f triple s2 and f fourth derivative to here and you will get the final answer. Final series expansion of this function fx in powers of x minus 2 only. So you can see that this is the advantage and here you can note down that Maclaurin series will expand the given function in powers of x only whereas the Taylor series can expand the given function in powers of x minus a so here for example we have expanded fx in powers of x minus 2 you can try to expand it in terms of x powers of x plus 1 in powers of x plus 2 in powers of x minus 3 in powers of x minus 1 etc now after this I take one more example of uh, Taylor series expansion of writing formal Taylor series expansion this time I take function as sin x and 
in place of x minus 2 it is given as x minus pi by 4 so we have to expand sin x in powers of x minus pi by 4 to do that we need to find derivatives so we will calculate derivatives so fx is sin x f dash x will be equal to cos x then we will have minus sin x then we will have minus cos x then we will have sin x and then after this we will have again we will have cos x so we can go on calculating but we should stop after fourth or fifth derivative because uh, nothing about remainder term is mentioned in the problem so we are writing formal Taylor's infinite series expansion for the function sin x in powers of x minus pi by 4 so we will take a equal to pi by 4 so we will need values of the functions and its derivatives at pi by 4 so we calculate the values at pi by 4 f pi by 4 as we know sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 so we will have 1 by root 2 f dash pi by 4 in this case will be 1 by root 2 f double dash pi by 4 will be minus 1 by root 2 f triple dash pi by 4 will be minus 1 by root 2 f fourth derivative at pi by 4 will be 1 by root 2 because fourth derivative is equal to sin x so sin by 4 is 1 by root 2 similarly we can calculate the value of fifth derivative at pi by 4 and we will get 1 by root 2 now if you will substitute these values in this formal series expansion formal Taylor series expansion of the function then we can observe that sin x or function is sin x this time so sin x in powers of x minus pi by 4 will be like this so here in place of a we will write pi by 4 here x minus pi by 4 then f dash pi by 4 then x minus pi by 4 square on factorial 2 and uh, f double s pi by 4 and so on up to infinity so we will have terms up to infinity we will have an infinite series on the right hand side now if we substitute values of f pi by 4 f dash pi by 4 and f double s pi by 4 f double s pi by 4 then we will observe that we will be able to take 1 by root 2 common and the remaining terms will be like this here we will have 1 and here we will also have 1 so x minus pi by 4 1 plus x minus pi by 4 to the power 1 plus x minus pi by 4 square upon factor 2 is equal to 2 f double s pi by 4 was minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 has been taken common so here we will have minus and so on. So you can write other terms also. So when in the question no remainder term is mentioned, then we write the formal Taylor series expansion, the infinite series expansion, and in that case we need to write first three or four non-zero terms of the given series. So this is the Taylor series expansion of the sin x in powers of x minus pi by 4 and as an application we can use this infinite series expansion to find the value of sin x at 46 degree so if you want to calculate the value of sin at 46 degree using this series expansion that will be a very straightforward process because we know that 46 degree means in terms of radial angle 180 degree is equal to pi so 46 degree will be equal to pi upon 180 into 46 so if we will put
put x equal to 46 pi upon 180 in this relation and if we calculate if we put the value of x equal to 46 pi upon 180 and we calculate using calculator then you will find the value of if you use first two or three terms in the given series then you will find the value of uh, sine equal to 0.7187193 which you will find approximately correct by verifying your answer from scientific calculator or the trigonometric tables which are available. So in this way with these two examples we have understood the importance of Taylor series. Using Taylor series we can expand uh, a given function in terms in powers of x minus a. So previously we have expanded the given function in powers of x minus 2. Here we have expanded the given function in powers of x minus 5 and 4. And these types of expansions are sometimes useful in calculating the approximate values of the given functions. So that's all. Next we will study concavity and convexity. Now concavity and convexity is again an application of differentiation. So we have studied applications of derivatives to obtain Taylor's series expansion, Maclaurin series expansion of the given function. Now we will study the application of the derivatives in deciding the concavity and convexity natures of the given function. So you have studied that a function of single variable represents a curve and we can differentiate a function of single variable to calculate dy by dx and you must have studied the geometrical interpretation of this first derivative that this first derivative geometrically means that if we have a curve which represents the function y over to fx and if we have a point p and if we draw a tangent at this point p whose coordinates are x, y then if this tangent subtend an angle of psi with positive direction of x axis in that case dy by dx the derivative of the function y to fx will be equal to tan psi will be equal to tangent of this angle psi so you have studied geometrical interpretation of the first derivative now here under this topic we will study the geometrical meaning of the second derivative. So you can look at concavity and convexity as geometry of the second derivative. So before giving you the idea of concavity and convexity, I can recall some concepts related with maxima and minima. So you must have calculated maxima, minima of a given function of one variable where if a function y over to fx is given then to find the maxima and minima first we calculate the first derivative dy by dx and equate this derivative to 0 and then we find points which satisfies this relation d over dx equal to 0 so d over dx equal to 0 gives us the values of x where the value of the derivatives will be 0 and uh, for those values of x we can calculate the value of y from the given function so we get points these points are uh, known as stationary points where we may have either maxima or minima but exactly what uh, type of stationary point will be this that can be decided by the use of second derivative so you calculate second derivative now if at these 
points if your second derivative is negative then you say that you have obtained maximum at that point and if we get second derivative positive then you say that we have obtained minimum geometrically maxima and minima can be explained by writing this curve so the point p1 here is a maxima point p2 is a minima and this point p3 is all is again a maxima and at maxima and minima you can find that the tangent drawn will be parallel to x axis so that is why at stationary point the radius will be zero so it will give us it will give us the point it will give us the stationary point where we may have either maxima or minima now to decide exactly what shall we have whether we will have maxima or minima for that we need to calculate the second derivative so if the second derivative is negative then we say that uh, we have a maxima and if the second derivative is positive then we say that we have a minima now your teacher at that stage must have told you that if your need to have a dx square is 0 then uh, the result is undecided or they may have told you that you may have point of inflection in this case but they may have not explained all these things in detail about this situation when your second derivative becomes equal to 0 so we will be considering this situation here while explaining concavity and convexity so now we come to these terms so concave concavity and convexity these are really words concavity and convexity these are not absolute term these are relative terms so an observer suppose i have a curve of this type i can write this curve with a large parameter so if an observer is sitting on this side and for this observer this curve is concave and if the observer is sitting on this side then for this observer this curve is convex so what we do is that we uh, fix our observer by using our reference frame and instead of writing concavity and convexity what we will do what we will do is that we will discuss concavity convexity in the direction of y axis so if we have a curve of this type then we will say that this curve is concave upward and if we have this type of situation then we will say that our curve is concave downward so so we will use these terms to discuss concavity and convexity now when we are writing that the curve is concave upward we can also write that the curve is convex downward so both these terms will mean the same thing and here when our curve is concave downward we can write convex upward now suppose our curves are y equal to fx so if the curve is y equal to fx then to decide the decide whether the curve is concave upward or not we will calculate the second derivative if second derivative is positive then we will say that the curve is concave upward at that point and if at any point we find that d2 y by dx square is negative then we will say that the curve is concave downward now we may have one more situation in which in which we may have a curve of this type now at this point if we draw a tangent and we will observe that the tangent 
crosses the actual curve so the tangent is crossing the actual curve now the tangent is crossing the actual curve so at this stage or d2 y by dx square will be equal to zero so when our d2 by dx square is equal to zero that means the second derivative is changing sign at this point so on the left it will be negative or positive and on the right it will have opposite sign so for example if on the left it is negative if d2 by dx square is negative then on the right it will be positive Similarly, if on the left it is positive, then on the right it will be negative. So, d2 y by dx square equal to zero. These types of points are known as special points, and these points are called points of inflection. So, at point of inflection, we will have second derivative equal to zero. So, point of inflection. It is a special point of the curve where the curve changes its nature. Curve changes its nature from either from concavity to convexity or from convexity to concavity. So we have we have observed these three formulas to find to decide the concave upward nature, concave downward nature, and the points of inflection. And we will use these ideas. to solve the problem and to find the intervals of intervals in which the curve is on the upward and intervals in which the curve is on the downward and also the points of inflection of the curve now for points of inflection we need to observe that simply making second derivative equal to zero does not guarantee whether it will be a point of inflection or not for that we need to calculate the third derivative and for the existence of points of inflection the third derivative should be non zero so either you apply this idea or you can apply that idea if instead of calculating the third derivative if we say that the second derivative changes sign as this point passes as we go through this point in that case this point will be the point of inflection Further, if we are calculating in this way, and if we observe that the third derivative is again zero, if we get third derivative again zero, then we need to calculate the fourth derivative. So, if the fourth derivative is again zero, if the fourth derivative is again zero, then we calculate the fifth derivative. And if fifth derivative is not zero, then we will say that yes. we have a point of inflection if in case we get third derivative equal to zero and the fourth derivative equal to not equal to zero in that case uh, there will be no point of inflection and that situation will go to uh, this concave upward and concave downward cases so you can note down that for points of inflection the even order derivative must be zero and all order derivative must be non zero if you want to calculate further so i have given you enough idea about the uh, concept of concavity and convexity which we will need to solve the problem now i give you some examples on concavity and convexity So in the first example, I consider simple curves. Suppose you want to decide the concavity, convexity nature of variable e to the power x. Now to decide the concavity, convexity, we need to calculate up to second order derivative. So first derivative is e to the power x. Second derivative of this function is also e to the power x. Now we observe that e to the power x will never be negative. So y-coordinates will be always positive. Will always be greater than 
zero for every value of x except minus infinity and plus infinity whenever x is finite the second derivative will always be positive so because second derivative is always positive so we will write that e to the power x curve will be concave upward everywhere similarly if we consider y over log x and if you want to decide the concavity and convexity nature of this curve then we will differentiate it twice first derivative will be 1 upon x second derivative will be minus 1 upon x square and here you can note down that your second derivative will always be negative whatever be the value of x minus 1 upon x square will always be negative so here we will say that the curve is concave downward everywhere here yeah. similarly we can consider y equal to sin x we know the curve of y equal to sin x we can actually draw the rough shape of y equal to sin x at x equal to 0 y uh, sin x is 0 and at x equal to pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1 and then at x equal to pi sin pi is 0 then at 3 pi by 2 it will be minus 1 and at 2 pi it will be 0 similarly it will repeat itself after 2 pi value so if we calculate its second derivative then we will observe that y dash is equal to cos x and y double dash will be equal to minus sin x so when our x will be between 0 and pi by between 0 and pi then our second derivative then our second derivative will be because sin x will always be positive in between 0 and pi so the second derivative will always be negative so the our curve will be concave downward similarly in the interval pi to pi our curve will be concave upward again it will repeat its nature after 2 pi interval because it is a periodic function sin x is a periodic function similarly we can discuss concavity convexity of y over to cos x or other types of curves which involve sin x and cos x so these were uh, the elementary functions for which I have discussed the concavity and convexity further you can note down that as x equal to 0 x equal to pi x equal to 2 pi the second derivative will be 0 and if you will calculate the third derivative so third derivative will be minus third derivative will be minus cos x and at x equal to 0 cos 0 will be 1 so the third derivative will be non zero so x equal to 0 x equal to pi x equal to 2 pi x equal to 3 pi all these points are the points of inflection of sin x or in other words we can say that all the points of inflection of sin x lies on the x axis this is our x axis and here we have a y axis so all the points of inflection of sin x lies on the x axis and the points of inflection we have an infinite point of inflection for y equal to sin x next we consider an algebraic curve and we try to decide the interval of connect, concavity and convexity and the points of inflections. So next we are considering a polynomial
So suppose our curve given in the question is y equal to x to the power four minus ten x cube plus thirty six x square plus twenty four x plus eleven. So this is the given term, and the question is decide. Decide the interval. Decide the intervals in which the curve is in which the curve is concave upward or downward, and also find. The points of inflection, and also find the point of inflection. So, to solve this problem, we can proceed in this way because we know to have the concavity and convexity, we need to calculate up to second derivative, and for points of inflection also, we need to calculate up to second derivative. So we calculate first and second derivative. First derivative will be 4x cube minus 30x square plus 72x plus 24. So I have differentiated this function: 4x cube minus 30x square and 72x plus 24. Now I calculate the second derivative. Second derivative will be 12x square minus 60x plus 72. So this is my second derivative. Now, because we have to decide points of inflection also, and uh, we have to decide the intervals in which the curve is concave upward or concave downward. What we will do? First, we will calculate the points where second derivative is g. So, if we try to calculate those points, we will get this equation: 12x square minus 60x plus 72 equal to g. From here, I can divide this equation. I can divide this equation by 12 to have x square and 5x, and here I will have 6. So, I will have x square minus 5x plus 6. Now, if I solve this quadratic equation, if I factorize the left hand side, I will have x minus two, x minus three equal to zero. So I will get two values of x, where the second derivative will be zero. So these two points may be the points of inflection. So then I will decide whether these are points of inflection or not, but or points of inflection. Will be out of these two points for this given term. So that we need to assure. Before assuring that, we can decide the intervals of uh, concavity and convexity using these that these uh, adjunction these points, which we need to check whether these are the points of inflection or not. So. I write an interval, and according using these two points. So to decide the interval of concavity and convexity, we will use these two points. So we have real line having zero at the center and minus infinity on the left and plus infinity on the right. Now x equal to two points. Suppose x equal to two points here. So I am writing x equal to two points. Suppose x equal to three points is here. So I have x equal to two point here. Now I have obtained these three intervals, and I can check the nature of second derivative in these three intervals. So you can note down that your second derivative is this 12x square minus 60x plus 72. So you can take 12 common and factorize the remaining part to have. X minus two x minus three factors. 
correct using this id so now after this when your x is less than 2 when your x is less than 2 so in that case x minus 2 will be x minus 2 if x is less than 2 then x minus 2 will be negative and if x less than 2 then x minus 3 will also be negative so your y double s will be positive so here in this interval when your x is between minus infinity and 2 then your second derivative will be zero so your curve will be concave upward in this interval when your x is greater than 2 but is it less than 3 so if x is greater than 2 then the first factor will be positive and if x is greater than 2 but it is less than 3 so x minus 3 will be negative so here in this interval your second derivative will be negative so you will have concave downward curve so in this interval between x equal to 2 and 3 your curve will be concave downward now i go to this interval where x is greater than 3 so when x is greater than 3 then x minus 2 will be positive and if x is greater than 3 x minus 3 will also be positive so in this case second derivative will be positive correct so the curve will be concave upward so in this way we have found the intervals in which the curve is concave upward and concave down so when x lies in this interval minus infinity to then your curve is concave upward when it lies in this interval 2 3 then your curve is concave downward and when your curve lies in this interval 3 infinity then your curve is concave upward so when the value of x is between 2 and 3 the curve is concave downward otherwise it is concave upward now we need to Uh, decide whether x equal to 2 or x equal to 3 are points of inflection or not. For that, we can calculate the third derivative and check whether at x equal to 2 the third derivative is non-zero or not. If the third derivative comes out to be non-zero at both the points, then we will say that both the points are points of inflection. Other way to say this is that at x equal to 2 the second derivative. change it is a sign because on the left of x equal to 2 the second derivative is positive on the right of x equal to 2 the second derivative is negative and for x equal to 3 on the left second derivative is negative on the right second derivative is positive so second derivative is changing sign when the curve passes through x equal to 2 and x equal to 3 points therefore x equal to 2 and x equal to 3 are both are points of inflection so if in addition we need to decide the intervals of concavity and convexity and points of inflection then we can use uh, this knowledge of the uh, sign of second derivative to decide the points of inflection clear okay. next we consider a question in which we need to find only the points of inflection so you look at that uh, so in the next question the interval of concavity and convexity is not asked but only the points of inflection are asked so in that case we need to apply the algebraic idea of calculating third derivative algebraic idea to decide the points of inflection so you look at this example this time i have a curve y equal to 3x to the power 5 minus 20x to the power 4 plus 50x cube 50x cube 
2 then minus 60x square minus 60x square minus 10x plus 50 minus 10x plus 50 so and the question is question is point points of inflection point points of inflection of y point points of inflection of y so we calculate the first derivative first derivative will be 15x to the power 4 minus 80x cube plus 150x square minus 120x minus 10 and we also calculate the second derivative second derivative will be 60x4 minus 240x square plus 300x minus 120 now to decide points of inflection we equate second derivative to 0 then we get equation of this form 60x to the power 4 So here when we will differentiate, we will get 60x cube. So we get 60x cube minus 240x square plus 300x minus 120 equal to 0. So this is the equation and you want to solve it and find the values of x. Now we observe that we can take 60 common or we can divide this whole equation by 60. So we will get x cube and uh, 4 x cube minus 4 x square and uh, 5 x and minus 2 equal to 0. So if we will divide the above equation by 60, we will get x cube minus 4x square plus 5x minus 2 equal to 0. Now we have to solve this equation and we observe that this cubic equation is satisfied if I put x equal to 1. So if I put x equal to 1, then I get 1 minus 4 plus 5 minus 2 which is equal to 0. So x equal to 1 is a solution of the left hand side cubic expression. Now to factorize the left hand side I use x equal to 1 and apply synthetic division to find the factor. So we will have here 1 minus 4 plus 1 minus 3 and uh, 5 minus 3 is 2. Now we add these pairs so 1 minus 3 2 and 0 so the factorization of left hand side of this equation will be this one factor will be x minus 1 that we have verified that x equal to 1 is a solution so x minus 1 is a factor and when we will divide it by x minus 1 we will get a quadratic factor which will have coefficients 1 minus 3 2 so x square minus 3x plus 2 will be the remaining quadratic factor which will be obtained by dividing this cubic expression by x minus 1 and we have decided this quadratic factor by applying synthetic division so we have calculated coefficients of this quadratic factor by applying synthetic division now uh, we observe the factorization and we see that 2 can be factorized as minus 2 minus 1 so we will have x minus 1 x minus 2 as factor so we get 2 points and which may be the points of inflection now to decide 
Surely, whether these are the points of inflection or not, we need to calculate the third derivative. So, we calculate the value of third derivative because we know that at x equal to 1 and x equal to 2, second derivative is 0. Now, we calculate the third derivative. Third derivative will be 180 x square minus 480 x plus 300. So, when we put x equal to 1, when we put x equal to 1, then we observe that the third derivative will be 0. So, when we put x equal to 1, we are getting third derivative 0. So, x equal to 1 point is doubtful. It may or may not be the point of inflection. So, for that, we calculate the fourth derivative. So, fourth derivative, when I calculate, I get 360x minus 480. Now, if I put x equal to 1, if I put x equal to 1, I get non-zero value of the fourth derivative. So, fourth derivative is non-zero at x equal to 1, which is an even derivative. So, Fourth derivative is non-zero at x equal to 1. Fourth derivative is non-zero. So, x equal to 1 is not a point of inflection. So, x equal to 1 is not a point of inflection. So, at x equal to 1, either the curve is concave upward or concave downward. So, it is not a point of inflection. Now we check x equal to 2. So if you will check for x equal to 2, you will find that the third derivative at x equal to 2 is non-zero. Because if you will put x equal to 2 here, so you will have 7, 2, 0. Because 180 into 4, 7, 2, 0 minus 960 if you will put x equal to 2 960 plus 300 so you will get 1020 minus 960 which is not equal to 0 so third derivative is not equal to 0 when x is equal to 2 and second derivative is 0 when x equal to 2 therefore x equal to 2 is a point of inflection so However, when we calculated, when we equated second derivative equal to 0, we got two points x equal to 1 and x equal to 2, but we observed that both the points were not the point of inflection. Out of these, only 2 is the point of inflection, x equal to 1 is not the point of inflection. So, this is the way to solve problems. Next, we can have one more problem on points of inflection. So, in this problem, we have a curve a square plus x square y equal to a square x and the question is so, question is to prove that, question is to show that the curve has three points of inflection. The curve has three points of inflection. Now, to decide the points of inflection of the given curve, we need to find the derivatives up to second order. So, first we write the given equation as this a square x upon a square plus x square and then we calculate the first derivative. So, here we need to apply the quotient rule, the division rule. So, denominators square, denominators as such into numerators 
differentiation 1 minus numerator into differentiation of the denominator 2x. So we get y dash equal to a square and a square minus x square upon a square plus x square whole square. Next we need to find the second derivative of this function. So, you look at the calculation of second derivative. The calculation of second derivative will also be based on the division rule. So, this time we will have a square plus x square power 4 and a square plus x square whole square as such and the differentiation of a square minus x square and that will be minus 2x. Because the differentiation of a square will be 0, now we write minus and a square minus x square as such and we differentiate a square plus x square whole square so we get 2 a square plus x square into 2x. Now we observe that a square plus x square can be taken common and can be cancelled. Further, we can also take minus 2x common. So we take minus 2x common from the numerator and a square plus x square common from the numerator. So we get minus 2x a square and a square plus x square 1 a square plus x square is also coming out and uh, we have so in the denominator we will have a square plus x square whole cube now here we will have a square plus x square only and uh, here we will have a square minus x square into 2 only because we have taken minus common so here we will have plus sign because we have taken minus 2x common and a square plus x square common so our second derivative looks like this so we can write minus 2x a square and these terms will be equal to 3a square numerator 3a square minus x square upon a square plus x square whole cube and further I can insert this minus 1 inside this bracket to have this 2a square x and x square minus 3a square upon a square plus x square whole cube. So this is the second derivative. Now we can observe the factorization of x square minus 3a square. So I can write x minus root 3a x plus root 3a and the denominator is a square plus x square. Now to obtain point of inflection of this curve, we need to equate the second derivative equal to 0. When we will equate y equal to, equal to 0, we will get the three values of x. x equal to 0, x equal to plus root 3a and x equal to minus root 3 So we may have points of inflection at these three points. But to be sure, we need to either we can calculate third derivative, the calculation of third derivative may be uh, complicated, will be of course will be complicated than the calculation of second derivative. So you can do that either. Otherwise, if you don't want to calculate, then the you can use that idea that at these points the value of the second, the sign of the second derivative changes, the second derivative changes its sign when the curve passes through these three points by using these three terms. 
so we can write we can observe here that as x passes through 0 passes through root 3a passes through minus root 3a the second derivative changes its sign so that is why we can surely write that x equal to 0 x equal to root 3a x equal to minus root 3a are the points of inflection thank you